Hello everyone and welcome to Trash Academy. Today I'm here in Santa Cruz, California, right at the edge of the Pacific Ocean and next to the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary where you can find sea otters, humpback whales, and even blue whales out here. But this is where we also find one of the oceanic gyres that keeps collecting plastic debris from our everyday products we use. My name is Eliseo and I am the education coordinator here at Five Gyres and today we're going to be learning about the afterlives of plastic and what happens to all these plastics that we use in our everyday lives and the different problems they are causing here in California and around the world. Today plastic is used to make anything and everything and each plastic, whether it be a spoon, a car part or even a plastic net, will degrade into smaller and smaller pieces becoming microplastics. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about microplastics. Now what are microplastics? Microplastics are plastics that are usually smaller than 5 millimeters in size. That's about the same width as a pencil eraser, but they can be thinner than a human hair. Microplastics can be found all around the world from our deserts to our forests and even our oceans. And while we're able to identify most of the plastics we buy from our stores, due to the resin ID code, which has those chasing arrow signs and a number in the center ranging from one to seven, but identifying microplastics is a very different story. You see, microplastics aren't just one type of plastic or one type of plastic polymer and require a laboratory analysis in order to identify what kind of plastic is being used. Now, where do microplastics come from? Microplastics come from all plastics, and many of these tiny plastics come from our synthetic clothing made out of downcycled plastic materials, and many more come from vehicle tires and the spillage of plastic pellets made by manufacturers. The physical breakdown of plastic litter also creates them, and rain washes them into rivers and into the ocean. But they could also be blown around by the wind, spread around by flying insects, and even end up in fields when treated sewage water and sewage waste is turned into fertilizer. Now, why is this important? Well, we're currently creating 380 million tons of plastic every year, and that amount is set to triple by the year 2050, according to leading scientists. Most of today's personal care products, home decor, and other goods are made from downcycled plastic items, and as a result, there has been a growing amount of research studies focusing on the possible health concerns plastic and microplastics may present in the future. Recent studies have found plastic inside of camels, inside of 90% of seabirds, and most recently, microplastics have been found inside of human placentas. All the microplastic particles analyzed were dyed blue, red, orange, and pink, and may have originally come from plastic packaging, paints, cosmetics, or other personal care products, and believed to have gone there through inhalation. While there still needs to be further research on the possible short and long-term effects of petroleum-based microplastics may have on the human body, scientists advise that plastics may leach harmful chemicals onto our body and may even trigger immune responses. Now all the plastics we use today are derived from fossil fuels, and each plastic has a different chemical makeup and chemical structure. Many of the plastics we use today carry dangerous chemicals and only increase their toxicity in our natural environment, binding to chemicals from city waste and industrial runoff. Microplastics can be found in all environments, but when they're found in aquatic or marine environments, they absorb hydrophobic chemicals, becoming tiny little sponges that can be up to a thousand times more concentrated than surrounding ocean water. These chemicals have also been known to be endocrine disruptors and have been linked to reproductive issues. While many of these plastics seem really, really small, their growing numbers and their hazardous chemicals are presenting problems for many food webs and many communities around the world that may suffer from bioaccumulation of chemicals, such as EPA, PCBs, PFAs, and many, many more. Now that we know more about microplastics, what is it that we can do to stop them? Well, here are four principal solutions that will have a high impact on preventing terrestrial, freshwater, and marine microplastics from forming. And they are, one, identify and quantify terrestrial microplastic sources. First, we need to identify how much plastic is being made and by who. Two, 
scale zero waste strategies. Using less plastic every day will lead us to a reusable and sustainable lifestyle. One of the easiest ways to begin your zero waste lifestyle is by starting a garden, whether it be in pots or even in the ground. Soon, you'll be harvesting your fruits and veggies from your deck or your backyard. Three, pursue policy-driven EPR. Collecting, cleaning, recycling, landfilling, and the incineration of plastic takes a lot of work, energy, and money. And it's time that companies pay for these services for contaminating our lives and our planet. But what does EPR mean? Extended proofs of responsibility requires producers to create market incentives for the reuse, buyback, and recycling of materials. However, the informal recycling economy poses major challenges to the quality of recycled goods and the traceability of buyback materials. Four, develop novel business solutions. It's time to create businesses that use sustainable and eco-friendly products and reuse materials instead of creating new materials from virgin plastic. Now, I wanna thank you for joining us today in Trash Academy and make sure to check out our other videos that you can even share with a friend. My name is Eliseo and I'll see you in our next lesson.